Hello guys, welcome to weekly economic current affairs. We are back again with our economic session. Let's try to discuss the past week economic news. What was there in the news and what were the important things that we need to discuss, right? Okay. So, we'll start the class for today. The first is a very, very important news editorial or article that came related to G20 meeting. As we know, now the presidency of G20 is with India for one year. Now, we need to know how this overall process works. If I talk about the overall process of G20, it occurs under two tracks, very, very important. These two tracks are finance track and Sherpa track. Now, basically, when I talk about finance track, it is being headed by are governors like in case of India, RBI of Central Bank and we have the finance ministers. If I talk about the Sherpa track, they are basically emissaries or representatives of political leaders. Now here, one thing one becomes very important when our finance minister says that crypto regulation would be a key focus as G20 finance talks begin. So, one of the things they would be discussing under the finance track would be regarding the regulation of cryptocurrency. I hope most of you guys know that in order to counter this cryptocurrency, India recently has started or RBI introduced e-rupee that is central bank digital currency in retail as well as in wholesale form. But the response to it has not been that much bright and we have to see in the coming future what it holds for us. But right now, the agenda for this finance track which is to be held under India is basically regarding this crypto regulation, managing debt vulnerabilities and reorienting global financial institutions. This would be the three major framework on which this G20 finance track would be operating upon. So, we have to see in the coming future what lies ahead for us in relation to this finance track, right? So, this is a very, very important news if I talk about G20, which is all over the news if we talk about because it is very, very important now that India is having the simultaneous presidentship of G20 as well as United Nations Security Council, which is a 15 member body, which is made 5 member hamare permanent, hai, right? Okay. The second thing that we are going to touch is related to an article that says the sustained growth in remittance. Very, very important. Now, I think everyone knows what is a remittance, right? Remittance is when a people work outside and when they send the money back home to their, let's say, native country. That is basically the meaning of remittance. Remittance, if we talk about traditional factors, came from the low wages in uh, we could say earnings came from basically from Gulf Corporation Council along with it was from Australia, USA and UK. But there have been now changes in the trends in the remittance as well. Plus, India is going to hit the 100 billion dollar mark in terms of remittance. That is a very, very big achievement if we talk about overall remittance. If we talk about overall numbers of the world in terms of remittance post COVID pandemic, there has been an increase in the growth of the remittance. Why there has been increase in the growth of remittance? One of the factors that has pushed towards is the fiscal stimulus that has been provided by the respective countries. Second, the willingness of the workers to pass the remittance back to their homes. These two factors have combined and resulted in a very good high growth of sending remittance back home. So, in context of this, we need to look at what is now the structural shift that is happening in terms of remittance. Let's try to look at the slides, right? Okay. What is remittance? It denotes a sum of money sent by one party to another. These days, the term describes the money sent by someone working abroad to their family back home. In the case of India, the largest source of remittance have been Indians working in Gulf Cooperation Council countries. Now, which are the countries that are part of Gulf Cooperation Council? 
यू ए बहरेन सऊदी अरेबिया ओमान कतर ओवेत एंड यूएसए एंड यूके फ्रॉम वेयर वी आर गेटिंग आर रेमिटेंस रेमिटेंस टू इंडिया आर सेट टू टच आर रिकॉर्ड हंड्रेड बिलियन डॉलर विच आर जस्ट डिस्कस्ड According to World Bank's latest migration and development brief titled Remittance Brave Global Headwinds India received 89.4 billion dollar in 2021 and this is the first time a country will reach the 100 billion dollar mark that is a big big achievement if we talk about India in this coming year when it will achieve a 100 billion dollar mark in terms of remittance right okay World remittances are expected to touch 794 billion dollar from 781 billion dollar in 2021. Now we are talking about the growth rate in the overall trend in remittances if we talk about global level. It represents a growth of 4.9% compared to 10% in 2021 which was the highest since 2010. If we talk about 794 billion dollar 626 went to low and middle income countries. Remittances represent an even larger source of external finance for this lower and middle income countries right so this thing is very very important the top 5 recipient countries this year are india mexico china philippines and egypt now these are the staggering numbers if we talk about remittances that has been coming in india right okay now why there has been this sustained growth why there has been this sustained growth in the remittances let's try to look at the various points gradual reopening of various sectors opening of the economy after covid improved migrant workers income and employment situations we can know about this migrants determination to help their families back home this is very very important this was the willingness of the migrants to help their family back home during the covid crisis along with it fiscal stimulus measures that were taken by the respective countries helped in workers earning more and providing more remittances back home right okay now this is the thing that we need to talk about that what is the structural shift that is happening in terms of remittances structural shift in india's remittances both in terms of top destination countries and the nature of jobs matlab kya hai jis country se paisa sabse zyada aayega और दूसरी चीज क्या कि नेचर ऑफ जॉब्स कौन सी होंगी दोनों में हमें चेंज देखने को मिल रहा है स्ट्रक्चरल शिफ्ट इन इंडियन माइग्रेंट्स की डेस्टिनेशन फ्रॉम लो स्किल्ड इन फॉर्मल एम्प्लॉयमेंट इन द जीसीसी कंट्रीज टू अ डोमिनेंट शेयर ऑफ हाई स्किल्ड जॉब्स इन हाई इनकम कंट्रीज नाउ रेमिटेंस is now बींग चेंजिंग फ्रॉम दिस लो स्किल्ड जॉब्स इन गल्फ कॉपरेशन काउंसिल फ्रॉम द हाई वेजेस दैट आर बींग अर्न बाय द वर्कर्स इन यूएसए यूके एंड ईस्ट Asia and these are the facts that prove this particular theory. Indian migrants may also take advantage of the depreciation of the Indian rupee visa with the US dollar. It fell by ten percent between January to increase their remittance. This is also one of the factors that has been sought of that has increased the remittance post. If we talk about India, whether it is coming from abroad. Now the structural shift is more remittances are coming from countries like USA, UK. initially it was from the gulf cooperation council and the nature of jobs is also being changing if we talk about nature of the remittances and its structural shift right so this thing is very very important now the next topic for today is was the recent regional meeting of the asia and the pacific region of international labor organization where they adopted singapore declaration now this singapore declaration is very very important because it is asking and telling us about the rights of the laborers to form associations rights of the women to increase their leadership equal pay for equal work and to have better institutional framework in order to regulate the labor laws this was the directive or was the collective call from this asia and pacific regional meeting of the international labor organization let's try to look at the points the 17th meeting of ilo set 10 point priorities singapore declaration agreed social dialogue was essential it urged the governments to ensure labor protection for all through promotion of freedom of association and effective recognition of the right to collective bargaining throughout the regions it called for closing gender gaps in the world of work promote equal pay for equal perk of equal value balance work and responsibilities and promoting women's leadership 
as you can see in this clipping as well it calls for increase measures to increase women's participation and promote equal pay so as a result now international labor organization is focusing more and more to recognize their labor rights as well as generating more and more women participation in this labor thing and to make them future leaders in respect of this particular we are talking about labor class okay guys so i think that was it for today's session where we discussed three topics related to remittance then we discussed about this international labor organization i hope you are able to understand this point and you are able to comprehend what is being going on let's say among g20 remittance and this singapore declaration till then see you next time thank you